Amen, amen, amen. Y'all keep Brother Yoke in prayer. He, he really needs it. Take your Bibles, go to Thessalonians 2nd chapter 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. It is, uh, I talked to Dr. Peacock today, so we need to, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be very long. I uh, need to get some prayer, but need, put in some serious prayer for Mrs. Peacock. Uh, she's going to need a lot of prayer. It's just, uh, it's one of those things, life, you never know when life is going to uh, throw you a curveball. You should always be kind of ready for the curveball when it comes, because the curveball is coming. Uh, it's just a matter of time when it does come. And I think to go into this life uh, not considering uh, what, what the future kind of holds for us, uh, the, the world is going down the tubes in a, heart, in a hand basket. I mean, it's, just, it's almost gone. Uh, and you can't really uh, do anything. Amen, brother. How you doing back here? But uh, you can't really do much about it. Uh, it is, it's what the Bible says, and uh, I, I love my Bible. I think it's the greatest book in the whole wide world, and, and when I read Jeremiah, uh, I used to read Jeremiah completely different than I read it now. I read Jeremiah, and I see a man warning the nation of Israel what God has said, uh, but the only way you can actually warn God, uh, someone of what God said is to have the Word of God, and then you've got to be, uh, you got to have the guts or the character to actually do what God says do. Jeremiah did that. Uh, there was all kinds of prophets in the land prophesying this, prophesying that in that day. Uh, they were all wrong. Jeremiah had to take a stand, and, and we've created a generation of young people that cannot take a stand. They refuse to take a stand. They will not stand up for what this book says. There's a compromise going on across the nation uh, that churches are compromising left and right, and they're compromising to get people in. And the Lord never said do that. What he said do is like, Jeremiah, you go tell them. And then it's my job. It's not, it's not the person's job. It's God's job. It's the Holy Spirit's job to actually convert or change the direction of people. And they just won't. They just will not do it. Uh, there's a lot of people in Jeremiah's day that said, tell us what the Lord said and we'll do it. No, you won't. You won't do it. Why? Because it's too hard. And it's got to the place where it's really, really hard. Some people ask me the other day, is why, why do people come in and out of church, our church especially? It's too hard. Uh, even if you were nice and sweet and lovey-dovey and you used the Word of God and told them what the Word of God says, this thing is too hard to go from way over here to way over here. I would have to compromise everything I believe to get anywhere close to where they're at. And, and we had a lady walk in the other day. Brother uh, Rich seen her down the street. It's talking to her for a few minutes. I'll get into this in just a second. But it's, it's a danger, and that's where Paul is. Paul never, never cut slack on anything. He was as gentle as he possibly could be, but he was as firm as he could be at the same time. He stayed there. And so many people, want to. they just want to blend and just live here. And brethren, this is not our home. We're passing through. We never were intended to be here. Even as a lost person, this is not your, your destination. Your destination as a lost person is a place called hell, and then inevitably the lake of fire. That's the truth. Uh, Paul never said much of that, but because he kept talking about glory, he kept talking about heaven, uh, which that's a great thing to talk about. But Paul says right here in verse 5 of 2 Thessalonians, let me get there, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we, we got down to the, uh, verse 6. It says, for uh, the Colossians, you know, Colossians and Thessalonians just don't look alike. For some reason. Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5, and it says, For neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye know, nor a, a cloak of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have uh, been burdensome uh, as, other, uh, as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous, of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also of our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail of for uh, for laboring night and day, because uh, we uh, we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preach unto you the gospel of God. Ye are our witnesses, and God also, how uh, holily and justly and unblameably, unblameable, uh, we behaved ourselves among you that believed. Uh, as ye know uh, how we exhorted 
and confirm uh, and comforted and uh, charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye walk worthy, that you uh, that ye would walk worthy of God. So that word "walk" has been taken out of a lot of new Bibles. Uh, you have to walk worthy of what God said, of God who hath called you unto His kingdom and glory. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because with, uh, when ye received the word of God, uh, which ye heard of us, and received it, uh, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Father, again, thank you for your blessings tonight. I do pray that you'd bless uh, this reading and, and uh, just the next couple of minutes, Father, as we go through a couple of verses here. Uh, Lord, thank you for Paul that wrote this saying that he never did veer off of what he had to say. Sometimes uh, this, this really stops us and makes us think, uh, Lord, about uh, which way we're headed down the path and, uh, Lord, uh, how we could help somebody else uh, get back on that path and, and encourage him. Lord, sometimes they don't need the hard stuff. They just need the milk, the sincere milk of the word, and, and they just need to, to grow a little bit in grace and knowledge. Uh, Lord, but uh, there's others that need to, to step up to the plate and do the right thing. Uh, Father, it's just so many times, Lord, in our lives, uh, the, the, the world and the flesh and the devil has just got so much stuff going on, Lord, that it's, it's just it's con it's confusing. Uh, Lord, it's, it's hard to live in this world. It used to not be this way. It's just a fast-paced world now. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for a book that slows us down. A blessed evening, Father, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul's talking, and he continues on. I like when he ends that. He says, but... Uh, when he starts talking, he goes in verse, the end of verse uh, 5. He says, For neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye know, nor, nor cloak of covetousness. God is witness. God, God oversees the whole thing. I said this last week, and I'll say it again this week. God oversees the whole thing. You, can't, you cannot get away from the eyes of God, the eyes of the Lord in every place. He watches everything we do. So you can't get, and he's taking note of it. And he actually... Did, uh, your, your walk will be determined by what you do. And he gives you little pieces. Some people in here will get one thing. Some people will get another. Some people will get a little bit more. But it depends on what you do with what he gives you. And it, it's, uh, Paul's sitting there. He's talking about the Thessalonians. He says, he says but God, he says, but in the, he says, God is witness. God is the witness of everything. Over in uh, Colossians, or Corinthians, he says, uh, but in the power of God, that your faith should not stand in wisdom of men. Uh, if you start listening to men, I'll tell you what, they'll get you, man. They'll, they're confusing. Uh, there's a lot of very smart, intelligent men. And they can say things that sound really, really good. And if you would just, but you got to walk back sometimes and say, look, what did the Lord tell me? Me. Me. I got to know what he told me. Uh, I, I can listen to what everybody else says. I think the Thessalonians were there, and Paul knew that, that he could talk to them like that. He goes, guys, you, get, you can't. You, when you accepted that last verse we read, for, for this cause also thank God without ceasing, because when uh, ye received the word of God. So when Paul spoke to them, the words that he spoke, they received not as it was Paul, but as it was God. Why did they do that? Because the Holy Spirit was bearing testimony to that thing. What Paul said, they, the Holy Spirit was testifying that, yeah, this is the word of God. And, and you knew that in your heart. I mean, I, have you ever heard somebody, heard somebody say something and you're listening to them and you go, yeah, that's the word of God, man. That's it. That's it. I, I, that's why I love Dr. Rutman. I, people sit there all the time and say, oh, this guy, you know, this. No, man, I can hear. I can hear. I can hear. I was down there. Brother Donovan was preaching at Brother uh, Peacock's church here back in January. And Brother Donovan, uh, almost every message, he was right online, right where I was at. And uh, I sit there and listen to the word. I said, yep, yep, yep. It wasn't Brother Donovan. It was the Holy Spirit. It was the word of God coming out. And what Paul was saying is you guys received it not as the word of men. There's where the difference comes. This world can't handle this book. They just can't handle it. Uh, and, and no matter how you do it, they're not going to handle it. It's not for them to handle anyways. This thing is for the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to. And that's what happened to me in 1980. I got back to Louisville, Kentucky, found a little King James Bible in my attic. Had no idea it was King James Bible. It just said Holy Bible on the back. I thought everything said Holy Bible was the Bible. That's how ignorant I was. People can still say you're ignorant today too. That's fine. But I'm, I sit there and start reading that thing. I read that not like it was just another book. I read that thing as it was the words of God. You know what the Lord did for me? He put that book in my attic, so the day that I was ready to do it, I found that book and had the right book in my hand to do the right job. 
No clue. No idea. That's the Holy Spirit. So many times people today leave the Holy Spirit out and think that if I just do this, I could reach it. No, you can't. Because you can't get to the heart of somebody. You can only get to yours. Your heart's the only thing that can be. That's where Jeremiah was. Jeremiah said, you had deceived me, man. That ain't right. You deceived me. And then he goes, but it burned inside me, and he couldn't shut up. Jeremiah was by himself in a nation full of people that wanted nothing to do with God. You know where you're at today? You're in a nation full of people that really want nothing to do with God. You're getting in their way. You're getting in their way. We started street preaching Saturday. I'm half tempted to stay street preach every Saturday. Uh, but you all do whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I don't really care. I'll go do it myself. I, I mean, it just, it's something that needs to be done. They are fighting against it. They, they want a form of godliness, but without God. And when you bring, try to bring God in that thing, you can try a thousand different ways to bring him in. And the, really the only way you're going to get him in is the word of God. That's it. There is no other way. You can compromise a thousand different ways. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of ways to do it. And what you'll find out is like any other church, oh, we can put shoes on their feet. But th doesn't that sound good? Let, there's a church right over here. We got a shoe ministry, man. We're going to make sure everybody got shoes on their feet. And I'll tell you what, if you've ever walked around on gravel without shoes, you'd be thanking God for a pair of shoes. But is that the ministry? No, what you did is you fulfilled a need. Uh, oh, the other day, man, I, I heard the Catholic Church is in big trouble. I'm like, whoa, how in the world did they get in trouble? They, the, the Supreme Court, I think, of Wisconsin said that the Catholic Church cannot... Uh, some of its uh, uh, charitable things, some of its charitable uh, works are, are works that can be done by a homeless shelter or anything else. So it's really not charitable. It's really not religious. And they, they started tax them, taxing them on it. Uh, and they said if the, if the Roman Catholic Church takes us to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court upholds that thing, then the tax write-off for most churches could just disappear. And this thing's coming. It's coming. I mean, it's all you have to do is just watch what's happening. Uh, this thing with Donald Trump, it's hilarious. Uh, you watch what happens. It has nothing to do with political. I don't even, it doesn't bother me one way who gets in president or not. I, I've got the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to take care of me. But Donald Trump, they, they put a fine on him in New York City that is so high, that's a half a billion dollars they put a tax on, that is totally unconstitutional. But there's nobody that can stop it. So you're in a country right now that should be set up by three different uh, 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 branches of government, and those three different branches of government cannot stop what they just did to that man. That's a third world country. I was talking to Beth on the way over here. Johnny, Johnny Leslie, when I went over to Croatia, he had to go down, and I heard, I heard Christian uh, missionaries. I would never do it. Never. He'd have to go down and actually pay people in the government to get stuff done. And people say, well, that's, you're bribing them. You're paying bribes. Well, you do the same thing when you go pay your license. You just do it with a, the, they have a form that you can fill out, and you give them $25 or $100 or $200, and they're happy with you. And you did the exact same thing, except they don't have all the forms. They just have a person sitting there, and how he gets his pay or she gets his pay is the money that you give them. Uh, I watched them do that. We're in a third, we're, our, country, our government has turned to a third world government. It could crash at any moment, man, any moment. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying, but you ought to be aware of that. You ought to be very aware that, hey, am I taking care of business so that if something happens, I can still go on? It'll only take a second. Oh, I was going to, I'll get that. Paul never flattered his converts. Paul never hid uh, his desires behind a message. Uh, everything was above board with him. I said that last time. And Paul ends that thing, God is witness. God is, so many people, if they stop at just a few minutes and realize God's watching what I'm doing, why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I doing it for the furtherance of the gospel or am I doing it for me? I hope to God that I, that I never get mixed up with those people who do it for themselves. There's nothing, brother, there is, it'd be easier to go out and make a million dollars than try to win a soul. That young lady came in the other day crying, me and Beth was talking to her. And uh, her name's Ashley. Y'all keep her on your prayer list. Hopefully she'll come Sunday. I mean, she was broken. Uh, and she sat there and said she was Methodist. Well, Paul's talking about the gospel here. One of the most important things you'll ever do is, is learn how to share the gospel or give the gospel to somebody else. She walked in. We started talking. I said, hey, let me ask you a question. Are you saved? And she goes, uh. I said, what is your religious background? Because if you don't know where she came from or what she's been into or involved in, how in the world could you possibly know how to talk to her? 
So me and Beth sit there, and she goes, she was Methodist. I said, you know what? If I was a Methodist 150 years ago, if, if we were 150 years ago, I'd be a Methodist. I said, you know, John, and as soon as I said John and Charles Wesley, her ear perked up. She knew exactly what I was talking about. We had a common place that we could start off of, and I took her through the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. She said, I did that. I said, have you ever asked him to go over Romans? Have you ever asked him to save She said, I sure did. I said, well, then you're saved. She goes, well, I hope I am. I said, well, wait a minute. Let me add. So I quoted her John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. I said, how long is everlasting? She goes, well, it's forever. I said, how long are you saved for? She goes, well, forever. I said, isn't that how, that's how simple the word of God is. I didn't have to convince her of nothing. That was God's already done it. I just showed her through the book what the book said for her. And you know what? So many times Paul is sitting there and he goes, he goes, I don't have to give. Why, we, why do we try to hide or to convince people in other realms to do these things so we can have an access to tell? Why don't we just tell them the gospel? And let the Holy Spirit reach them. That's really the only way they can get saved. Paul did that. Paul's sitting here. Uh, I talked about uh, Paul finding grace and everything else. But verse 6. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. Nor of men sought we glory. Paul never cared. Now, here you go. You should care. Uh, I should care what you guys, and I'll get in that second here. I should care what you all think. But what the world thinks when it tells me to shut up and I shouldn't open my mouth for Jesus Christ, I'm not going to listen to them. Uh, I just refuse to do that. Uh, the, the world says right now, well, you can't talk about transgenders. You can't talk. There's a guy out in Colorado that wouldn't put a, uh, a thing on top of the cake for two homosexuals. They took him to the Supreme Court. Just before they took him to the Supreme Court, another group came in, and he won the Supreme Court. Another group came in and said, hey, we want a transgender cake. He said, I'll make you your cake, but I'm not going to put that on top of it. You go do that somewhere else. They, they, they brought a lawsuit against him. He won the one, and they, they just never end. It never ends. It never ends. It never ends. Guess what? Your Christianity, your walk will never end. You're, you're, you're in a war. We're in a warfare. Paul was in a warfare. If you look at the way Paul lived, uh, Paul is our apostle. He's the Gentile apostle. And if our life doesn't mirror his to some degree, then we have a problem. There's several men, Dimitri, uh, uh, Titus, or, or they, I think Titus went to Dalmatia, uh, and he said, uh, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Demet not Demetrius, but uh, Demetrius. Le he loved this present world. It eventually got him. Somewhere down the road, something got him, and this world pulled him off to the side. Because it becomes harder and harder and harder to take a stand. The stand that you have to take sometimes, uh, you have to stand up and take the heat. And you might lose everything in the process of doing it. Peter did, James did, John did, all of them did. Every single one of my forefathers, every one of them did. Fox's Book of Martyrs, they all lost it. Some of them got died, died horrible deaths. Uh, that's my forefathers. That's mine. And that's yours also. You know what's wrong with today is that we're trying to get rid of that and make everything palatable. Christianity is not palatable. You are on your way to hell and you got to get out of that and go to a place called heaven. And the only way you can get out is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is none. It would be nice if there was one, but there isn't. And, and we, we tried to smooth that thing over. We've tried every Churches have tried for the last hundred years to smooth that thing any way they can get it, to get it in there. And we've, we've created an anemic bunch of Christians. Instead of the Ephesians, the soldier that's sitting there on his knees praying and got all the armor on, we've created a, an entire uh, world of anemic Christians. They don't have the blood in them anymore, man. There's something wrong with them. Nor have men sought we glory. I was preaching a meeting over here one time, and, and uh, John Mitchell asked me to come over. He got me in, in it, and uh, I started, man. There's a bunch of preachers there. They'd never had me back ever again in a million years. I sit there and look, and I said, you, you stinking bunch of bums. You're all the problem. They all started looking. I mean, these are all preachers now. I didn't really care. I said, in Dayton, you guys are the problem. You, you're, you're, you're just acting like a bunch of little sissies, and you won't get out there and say the right thing and do the right thing, and your churches are, are falling apart, and you wonder why. So I can tell you, you never had me back. Never even talked to me again after that. But I, I was in a point, and Mitchell said, brother, you, you're mean. I said, I know I am. I said, but, but these guys are just that. They're, they're trying everything, but what needs to be done is what the book says. The book is just clear. I couldn't, I've, had, I've fixed the electronic equipment before that nobody could fix, and the only thing I did was read a book. I'm telling you, the only thing I did was go get the book, open it up, 
and started doing what the book said. I didn't have a clue what I did when I got done. I just did it, and I followed the pictures. Pictures are cool, man. And they give you a picture right in a book. You look at the picture. There's the picture. If you hooked everything up right, you should get that picture. If you don't get that picture, you check to make sure you hooked everything up right according to the book. And it gives you a picture how you hook everything up. If you hooked everything up right and you set all the knobs right, you should get that picture. And I did. It's okay, I got it. And then next step, next step, next step, and then one step. I didn't get the picture. I checked everything, didn't get the picture. I, I didn't go get the cards and just start slapping them in. I did everything, made sure I did everything right according to the book. And then 26 other ETs couldn't even come close to that because they wouldn't do what the book said. The book says some things that's hard sometimes. You got to sometimes sit there and read that thing and scratch your head and say, what did he just say? What did Paul, what is Paul trying to get me? Don't look, you should look. Paul says, be ye followers of me. Well, that kind of sounds like it's opposite of what he's just saying here. That's not what he's, that's not opposite. Paul says, when it gets down to it, your answer is to God. It's to the Lord Jesus Christ. You grieve or quench the Holy Spirit and he'll walk away from you and not talk to you. You say, well, I feel like the Holy Spirit's never talked to me for a long time. I heard a guy on the radio the other day. It was kind of cool. He was going through five things. He said, five things. He said, my old grandpa taught me. And one of them, he says, the darker it gets, the more stars you see. I thought, that is cool, man. I remember a time when I was out in the middle of the ocean, and you walk outside, and we walk inside, and they had red lights on, and your eyes adjust to the red lights. At 9 o'clock, they shut the white lights off, put the red lights on so it doesn't travel so far. But if you walk out that door at, at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, it's pitch black outside. You open the door, shut it. I mean, you don't see nothing. But the, the longer you stay out there, the darker it gets. And pretty soon, one little star here and one little star there and one little star here and one little star here. And all of a sudden, the sky is just wide open. And there's billions and trillions of stars. And I sit there after she said that. I said, Lord, I said, there's times in my life, man, where it seemed like it was dark. I said, but I'm still talking to you, and I'm still listening to you the best I can. I'm still trying to do, you, do what I think you should ask me to do. And all that is is someone who's trying to follow after Jesus Christ. That's all you can do. You can't do any more than that. You can't get into the hearts and minds of anybody. And you, I, I've watched people over the years, and you look at them, and you think on the outside they're one way, and on the inside their little mind is going a thousand different directions about what they think. And it has nothing. And in time, it shows out. It's always showed out. I've been doing this for 43 years. I've watched that. In time, it always shows up. A person's either going to do right or they're going to do wrong. And some people are good, man. They can last for a while. Uh, and some people are honest. But the person that is honest, that does what God says do, that person is the one that's going to last out there. Nor of men sought we glory. I don't ask anybody to show me what to do. I wait till the Lord throws that thing right in front of my face, and it's beyond a shadow of a doubt. And this, this church was one of them. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt walking around this building that this is where he wanted me to be, and this is the work that he wanted me to be part of. This one right here. Not another one. Not somewhere down the street. Not over there. Right here. And every, every ounce of my being has been in this thing, and one of these days I'm going to have to let it go. I already know that. But I tell you what, until then, this is where he's got me. Uh, and so many people never get that. They think they know. They think they know. Well, wait a second. How do you know? Are you making that decision yourself? No, you got to be a follower of God. Paul, Paul's sitting here. Paul knew it was very dangerous looking for the approval of, of just men. If, if you're looking for just approval of men and you're looking for somebody to give you the approval you need, you're looking in the wrong place. Looking for a man to guide and direct you. Dr. Roman guided and directed me. Uh, Ron Burris guided and directed me. Uh, uh, Dave, Dave uh, Gibson guided and directed me. Brian, Dr. Brian Donovan that guided and directed me. Dr. Greg Esep got it and directed me. But it, when it all got right down to it, you had to be able to walk with God. You had to be able to make some decisions. You'll never do anything because you're always going to be looking somewhere else. Paul knew it was very, Paul, nor approval from those that he was trying to minister to. The key here is ministering. You got to minister. And sometimes, just like a doctor, you, they don't want to hear what you got to say, but you got to say it anyways. And I don't mean you have to be mean. You don't really have to be mean. We, out on the streets out there, uh, Jonathan and myself wasn't mean the other day. I didn't hear Jonathan I, being mean one time. I wasn't mean. I, I just quoted the scripture. That's all I did. Uh, I, guys, I tried to talk to him, hand him a tract. He didn't want it. Uh, he said, blank God. I said, but you don't want to say that to him when you get there. We, I, I first said, hey, when you get to heaven, say that to him. And he goes, I'm, going, I'm looking for him. I said, but you don't want to really say what you just said to him when you get there. And uh, he, he said a couple other things and went off. 
but yeah, Paul, Paul knew. Paul knew it was very dangerous looking for the approval of just, just men. If I'm looking for that, it's wrong. Uh, he didn't care about Peter. He, didn't, he went to Peter and James and John for approval for some things, but he stood his ground on what he knew was right. And even Peter later on down the road, it, it played out that Peter said, yeah, Paul was right. Paul is the uh, apostle to the Gentiles. I'm, I'm the apostle to the Jews. Uh, neither of you, Paul said, I'm not looking for glory from you guys. I'm trying to help you, nor yet of others, uh, when we might have been burdensome as other apostles. Paul never was burdensome. We're in a world today where the funds have to be there before we want to do something. Instead of doing something and letting God do the, do the thing. Years ago, man, that's the way it was. Some of these older preachers and missionaries and evangelists, they went around somewhere probably back in 94, 95, 96. I started watching these guys say, oh, I can't do that unless I got this, 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 and this. If I got this tractor trailer with a camper on the back and, and all this other stuff, then I can go out and serve God. Paul never did that. Paul just went out. Paul never had anything. You know what Paul did? He served God. He was an example. Uh, I heard uh, a good friend of mine the other day, preacher, was preaching. And he said, what we need today is men and women. We don't need teenagers. We got enough teenagers as it is. We need men and women to stand up. If I mention the preacher's name, you'd all know him. I said, we need men and women to stand up and be the men and women of God they're supposed to be. See, now that's some hard preaching. You guys are awful quiet all of a sudden, man. You look like you're all mean and mad. But that's just, you know what? You know what's wrong with our world? We're trying to be like them. Instead of getting them to be like what you, first of all, am I like Christ? If I'm like Christ, I should be striving to get them to like Christ. That's the only way to do it. Uh, nor yet of anyone else. He said, no, none of others. And he said, I wasn't burdensome to you. Paul's testimony was, was squeaky clean when it came to what he did before everybody. He was very aware. There's a lot of people today that, that really don't care what anybody else thinks about them when it comes to their testimony. But your testimony, my testimony, has to be squeaky clean. The best you can possibly make it. Because if you're going to minister to somebody, you got to watch out that they don't think it's for filthy lucre's sake. Because if it becomes for filthy lucre, or they even get the appearance that it's for filthy lucre, they ain't going to listen to the words you have to say. You can say it all day long. They're just not going to listen. Paul was clean about that. I like, I like Psalm, Psalm 75, 6. Probably some, early on in my Christianity, the Lord gave me quite a few verses. But 75, uh, 6, Psalm 75, 6 and 7 says this. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor the west, nor the south. But God, who's in the north, God is the judge. He put it down one, set it up another. You know what he just said? You can raise yourself up anytime you want, but it's not me. You wait for me and I'll raise you up, and you'll know it's me. And everybody else will know it's me. He goes, but you can raise yourself up. You know what's wrong? You know what he said? He sends you to, I like being in church. I told somebody the other day, I said, man, if I could just be a pew sitter, I'd be great. I said, I'd be the greatest pew sitter you've ever seen in your life. I would sit there and go, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. What do you need done? I'd go do it. You need toilet clean? I don't mind cleaning the toilet. I don't mind doing any of that stuff. I do it now anyways. It doesn't really matter. Oh, before y'all get out of here tonight, I need some men to help me get this uh, organ off this, this <laughs> stage because I am not mad enough to get it off by myself. <laughs> I can do a lot of things, but that's one thing I can't. We're getting a new organ Friday. Uh, hopefully, Jerry will be here testing it out, and we'll check it out. But, uh, yeah, Paul said that, man. He goes, God is judge. He put it down one and set it up another. And I, he taught me that lesson in school. I go in school up at Great Lakes, and I was behind everybody. And a, an instructor came by and said, Mike, can you use a TI-30? I said, yeah, I can use a calculator. He said, do you understand the formula layout? I said, yeah, I got the formula layout. I, I can plug that formula into here. He said, all you got to do is get the numbers, get the right numbers, where they belong, plug that thing in. If you can give me the right answer, I don't care how you get the answer other than cheating. Don't you be looking on somebody else's paper. But if you can use a calculator, TI-3035, to get your answers, and you give me the right answer, you're done. I said, good. I graduated number one. You say, how did you do that? A guy came by and said, look, don't worry that you're behind everybody else. You know what the Lord showed me? I can get you through anything. Anything. And when you get through on the other side, you'll still have a smile on your side, and you'll know it's me. You know what I've watched people try to step on other people and get to some place that they should never have been, and in time, 
I can name them off, man, one right after the other. In time, they fail, they look bad, they're, 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 their testimony is shot, and it just looks like all they do is trying to climb the ladder of success. And the ladder of success is not always the best thing to do. You know what Paul said? He said, let God do it. You know what you need to do first is sit back. He said, guys, at Thessalonians, sit back, let God. He said, I'm so happy with you guys because you didn't seek, uh, nor of men, he said, nor uh, of you. He said, I didn't seek any of this stuff from you guys. And I'm, I'm not going to go through the rest of that stuff that I went through. Uh, but as Christians, as Christians, Paul is telling us, and he, as we go through the book, as a Christian, we should live our lives for others and not ourselves. That's exactly what Paul did. You know how Paul got to do what he did? There's only one Paul, by the way. There's only one Paul. You know why God used Paul the way he used Paul? Because Paul was like Jesus Christ. He gave himself to the ministry. He gave himself wholly. And he didn't really care if he lived or died. He already knew. He had faith. You say, well, faith, without faith it's impossible to believe him. That's what it says in Hebrews 11.6. Paul knew that the Lord already told him, you're going to go to Rome. So Paul didn't care how he was going to get to Rome. I know I'm going to get to Rome. So you can't kill me if you wanted to. Number one, even if I didn't know I was going to go to Rome, you couldn't kill me if you wanted to anyways because God's got his hand on me. So who really cares? You know, people, I, I've sat there, I've, I've had a lot of people mad at me lately in the town here. And there's a couple that's, that's mad that could do, do some strange things if they really, really wanted to. And I, I thought, I said, I said, Lord, they could do whatever they want, but I'm not going to sit here all day and worry about what anybody wants to do. I said, if they do it and you let them do it, then you let them do it anyways. The biggest thing was that trailer, man. I said, I was talking to a guy today, and he said, man, somebody got my bank account and took all my money, and I went to the bank, and I don't know, I said, hey, it's not all over yet. So I told him that story about that trailer sitting over there. And I said, hey, that, somebody stole that trailer. And I had, uh, I think Brian called me, Mike called me, Beth called me. I was in Kroger's Woohoo shopping. They're all trying to make me feel bad. I ain't going to feel bad. I don't really care. It's a black trailer. We use it for, I was, then all of a sudden I just started thanking God. Man, Hannah gave a good testimony the other day. She went over to washing dishes, started belly aching about washing dishes. And somewhere in the process of washing dishes, she realized, thank God, man, I got dishes to wash. Thank God I got a sink to put them in. I'm like, well, we gave you a dishwasher. What happened to it? That's what I'm thinking the whole thing. We just put a dishwasher over there. Why didn't you just stick them in the dishwasher? And no, she goes, then I got two hands to put the soap on. I got soap. I mean, as you're starting to go through that, she goes, and then all of a sudden, the whole thing opens up to be thankful. It's, it is, it's a mindset. That's all it is. It's just a mindset. When you stop and say, I said, hey, Lord, that's your trailer anyways. Praise God, I had it for eight months, man. I couldn't imagine unloading that thing for eight months by myself down there because I couldn't get nobody else to go with me. I'd have been down there unloading. I'd still be down there unloading the first load. And I said, all I had to do is take it down there and go, zzzz, zzzz, and come back and they fill it up again. I couldn't believe there was that much garbage over in that complex. I couldn't believe it. I started thanking God. Thank you, Lord, that I had it for, I said, number two. I said, you know right where that trailer is. I said, you can put your finger on that thing right now, right now, anytime. I said, but it's your trailer. And if you don't want me to have that trailer, that's fine. I just want to thank you for the time. And then I started saying, Lord, the guy who stole that trailer is going to have to answer to you one day for that and probably a lot of other stuff. I said, save that man's soul. Do something to save that man's soul. By the time I was even saying that, that trailer was already impounded in the impound lot. And they were just waiting to tag, tie the two uh, reports together where the guy impounded it on Sunday, a couple hours after the guy stole it. And then the other guy put it in. And when the two tied together and they could see the VIN numbers the same, he calls me up on Thursday and says, your trailer's sitting over here. You know the only thing I complained about? Why I had to spend 320 bucks to get it out. <laughs> what a whiny crybaby. All Christians should live their lives. You know what that did when I was over getting it out of the impound lot? I got a, uh, sitting there witnessing the three or four guys sitting there at the impound lot, telling the story of what God did and how he worked that thing out. And I didn't belly ache in front of them about the 320 bucks. I waited until I got out the door and in my car by myself. But we have lost, we have lost that in America, a servitude, a servitude attitude. We have lost that. We're servants, brother. We're servants. That's all you are. You'll never, you're, you, you're, if you attain to a servant, you have attained to the highest level of place on this planet. That's what Jesus came to be. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. Not the Lord over them to serve them. He washed their feet. He did everything. 
I mean, when you sit there and watch, he brought them back from the dead. He healed their sicknesses. He fed them. He did everything on the word. He told them the word of God. They hated him. They hung him on the cross. You say, well, what, do I got to go to the cross? I hope you don't. But brother, I'm telling you what, there's a lot of things out there that could be there. And if you do the right thing, you're going to have some people get mad at you. There is no way you can keep it. I've, I've been around mealy mouth Christians. I'm so sick of people that come up and say this, this, this. Well, if you just do this, if you just take the Baptist off, I ain't going to, I don't put two signs out there with Baptist on it. I ought to put Baptist on all of our cars when you pull in the parking lot, not even let you pull in the parking lot. I'm just joking about that. That's good. As Christians, we should be living a sacrificial life. Now, brother, that's going to be hard to do in this age. I mean, that's really rough because you've got to move around. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. But a sacrificial life is one that where you're, you're willing to give your life to Jesus Christ and let him choose whatever you want. Uh, I think, really, he, he got me around this building. Beth mentioned the building initially. And I remember it, man. I mean, have you ever remembered times in your life where the Lord just told you what to do and it made absolutely no sense? I got to walk around this building, man. The guy wouldn't, I broke into this building before we got it. He wouldn't let me in. And I just wanted to come in and see how bad it was or what was wrong with it. Why won't you let me come in? So I broke in one of the back windows back here and, and we had a little kid break a back window out. I didn't get mad at him. Everybody's wondering why you didn't get mad at him because I already did it too. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I got to replace it. So we replaced it. Who really cares? So I, went, I came in the building, looked around, and said, man, I know what I got. I don't want me in here. I said, this place is messed up. And, but it was, I was giddy inside that the Lord would show me a place that we could possibly make something out of and that he had ever given me the ability. You know what? If he hadn't have given me that ability over the last 20, 25 years, that would have never happened. He made me wait 25, 30 years until I was ready to actually see what he wanted. If he'd have showed me that 25 years, I'd have freaked out and took off running. But no, I'm walking around the building and saying, yeah, man, this can work. Yeah, this can work. Ah, this can work, man. I think we can do something here. I, don't, I didn't see all the gravity of everything that needed to be done. I'm just like, yeah, man, this, this could work. I got Mike, man. Mike, Mike will make, me and Mike will make that thing work. I mean, you're sitting there. We, I was walking around this thing, and, and I kept walking around it, and it was like the Holy Spirit saying, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure you could? Yeah, man, I got Mike, man. We can do it. Serious, we can do it. I didn't know Brian was coming or, or Rich was back here coming or anybody else was coming. George, man, George. George was George. Uh, George, how? If you're watching, we love you, man. Uh, but, but I'm sitting there walking around this thing thinking, we can do anything. If God's in that thing, we can do anything. You know what he did? He made me wait all those years and let me learn some things. So when he put me in a place that you guys needed something, he said, can this, Mike, can you do this? Because I didn't see none of you all either. And the Lord's seen it. But I didn't see it. And you know what he said? He said, just wait, just wait. Well, I tell you what, you know, I think a lot of times we miss life because we don't wait for the Lord to give it what he wants, and we miss that sweet time with him as we're walking. I have some sweet times, man. I have some sweet times walking with him. I just enjoy it. I mean, it's just walking with him becomes sweeter and sweeter every day. Uh, most are looking for instant gratification. Never, never considering. I, I don't think the, the uh, Thessalonians were like this. But as Paul was talking right here, he said he's basically getting on them people, and he's saying, guys, man, he goes, he goes uh, verse 6, he says, nor of men sought we glory, neither of, of you. But he's starting to watch this thing, and, and as he's coming down through here, he says, uh, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Uh, he's sitting there saying, I wasn't bur burdensome to you. I was your servant. He goes, and, and what you need to do is learn how to be that servant. Uh, but in our, in our society today, I look... We are now 35 million, no, excuse me, trillion dollars in debt. That, that number is just astronomical. You and I don't really necessarily feel that yet, but at any 35 trillion dollars, if somebody called that debt, we'd be in trouble. Uh, that uh, uh, aircraft carrier is only 13 billion. Uh, it takes a thousand billion to make a trillion. So you're looking at roughly. A thousand aircraft carriers for one trillion dollars, and you're thirty-five trillion dollars in debt, and they're adding two trillion every year. Where do you think this thing's going to go? Uh, we are thirty-five trillion dollars in debt. The whole thing hinges on the moving of the dollar. At any moment, the bottom could fall out of that thing. Am I depressing you? Good. Uh, and then what? In 1929, the cause of the Great Depression includes slow consumer demand. Mounting consumer debt, decreased industrial production, and the rapid and reckless expansion of the U.S. stock market. We're right there. We are right there. 
right there. Everything is set that if something happened, uh, the whole thing could fall apart in just a minute. Are you ready if it falls apart? Paul is sitting here saying, as a servant, you should. He goes, I never, that's why Paul never got married. Now, if you're married already, I'm married, so it's, I'm already through all that stuff, the kids and all that stuff. So I, me and Beth are sitting back going, ah, take the kids home. Woo, see you later. Glad y'all stopped by, man. Come back and see us again. The lights always be on. Uh, but we had raised five kids. And I know what it takes to raise five kids. It takes a lot. It's rough. It is rough to get through that thing. Uh, but it seems like it just flew by. We tried all kinds of different things along the way. Tried this and tried that and tried this and tried that. But we never took God out of the picture. Uh, I mean, we tried just about everything you possibly could. Uh, they, they want it now. Everybody wants it now. Never. You know what keeps you from being a servant? You don't have time. You know where God stuck you is right here. You know what keeps you from being a servant? You don't have time. You got to watch that time thing, man. It flees away quick. It flees away quick. Paul's saying don't do it. Paul never did it. Paul chunked it all to get. Jesus Christ basically chunked heaven to come down here where you're at so that he could reach you and me. And, you know, for 2,000 years, it's been doing pretty good. And actually, he's been doing it for 6,000 years. I still think Adam and Eve are there. I want you to, he said, I want it, I want it now. You can get almost anything you want today. Anything you want, if you walk into a dealer or anywhere, you can get whatever you want today. They're going to give it to you on credit because you've got good credit. And they're going to give you, and you know what people do? They just buy and buy and buy and buy. It's addicting, man. I hate the bid site. I told Beth, I said, I hate that thing, man. Because you get on that thing, and it's like one thing. There's a billion things you can buy cheap, usually cheap. You bid on them, and you can get them some of them things really, really cheap. But it's never ending. It's like, when do you get enough? How many more garages do you have to have? I don't want them. You can get anything you want because there is someone who wants to sell it to you. <laughs> there is somebody out there got to keep that buck moving, or else it crashes. Uh, I've convinced myself that I really, yeah, yeah, you got to convince yourself. Paul is trying to warn them. He's trying to warn them. Brethren, this is the world we're in today. We're not 2,000 years ago where all they worried about is getting up in the morning and eating and going back to bed. We have all, the, America's got all the luxuries. This thing with Donald Trump, that thing, when I was overseas in 1980 uh, through 85, 86, 87, 88, in that time frame, the, what they're doing in our government right now is what they were doing over there then. The control and the way they ran that thing, uh, Putin goes out and kills his, his uh, uh, adversary, the guy who's trying to run against him, puts him in some stinking thing out there in the middle of Siberia, and, and then all of a sudden the guy ends up dead. Uh, that's just the way it was, and, and exactly what are they trying to do to Donald Trump? They may not shoot him, they may not try to kill him yet, uh, but they're trying to break him every way they can, and how in the world can anyone get 91 charges against him, and he's never done anything? I mean, it's, it's insane, and nobody's there to stop it. Brethren, you're in a world today just like Jesus was with Paul or Pilate and Herod. They can do whatever they want. Uh, Herod killed John the Baptist just because his wife come in and sent her little girl in there dancing in front of him. And he goes, I'll give you whatever you want. I want John the, head's, uh, John the Baptist's head. And she, he gave it to him just like that. Go kill John the Baptist. Our government, your government's getting that way. And there's nothing you can do. But you got to live in this thing. And you can't let this thing get you. Whatever you do, you got to. I, I was in the Navy. I love the Navy. Until, until they came that day and they said, you need to put your Lord over here. I said, you're done, man. Now, that hurt. That was a hard thing. But I'm telling you, I did it. I, Jesus and my job was always side by side, being Jesus and, that, and being an ET. And there came a day when the Lord said, that thing's got to go. Why? It's in the way, Mike. It's in the way. You, and I didn't even see it was in the way until he showed me that that day was in the way, and it's in the way. Uh, you're, you're, you have to work. You have to eat. I got all that. But that's not your God. My God is Jesus Christ. It's not my house. It's not my car. It's not my, my backyard. It's, not any, it's, it's the Lord. If I lose everything I got tomorrow, praise God, hallelujah, he can give it back to me the next day. Uh, people, we we got we to gotta watch it. This world will get you, man. It will get you. First Corinthians, we should be caring about other people, and that's what Paul did. Paul said that over there in that verse, at the very end of that verse. He said we were not burdensome. Paul came and worked did what he had to do to minister to those people. And he said, guys, you know what? He, he told him, he said, guys, you know that. 
Your testimony before other people will be exactly what you are. And this is the group right here where it's going to be the hardest because these are the ones see you every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any other time we're all together doing all. This is the group. This is the one that your testimony comes to check with. I can go anywhere and be anything in front of anybody that doesn't know who I am. They can say, oh, you're the pastor of Anchor Baptist Church. Oh, this, 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 this. But they don't know me. You guys know me. And, and if you come and say, hey, what about this, what about this, I have to stop and think about that thing. I have tried, honestly, the best I can to keep everything from the salaries to everything down to a place where there is never a thing that somebody can bring up and put their finger on and says, you're this, and have any, any grounds to say what they want to say. Paul, Paul knew that, and he says, I was not burdensome to you. I was not burdensome to you. You know I wasn't. He tells him, he says, for conscience sake, he says, you're supposed to have a good testimony. And when you do that, you have an effect on people's lives. Paul keeps on going through there. I'm going to buzz through a couple of these things. But we were gentle. Now, here's, here's the hard part. This is, this is the part I have a problem with. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. You know, Paul loved everyone there so much, but he told them the truth. He didn't hold it back. He did not tell them. He did not sugarcoat it. He did not come in and say, hey, guys, that's why the Thessalonians were what they were, because they received it. When you get over that last verse over there where he says, for this cause also thank we God, 13, without ceasing. Paul's saying, man, I can't even stop thanking God because it wasn't us. It's because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it, not as the word of men, but as in truth, the word of God. Dr. Roman said, guys, you need to memorize that verse. You need to never forget that verse because that's the difference between a Christian and just somebody in the world who says, I know the Bible. A Christian is someone who is like Christ. You were like Christ. They were first called Christians at Antioch. When they picked this thing up and started doing it, and, and Paul says it, I was sitting down in a church, me and Beth stopped at the church. I mentioned this story lots of times, but I, we pulled into a church on a Wednesday night coming back from uh, uh, PBI. We were going back to Norfolk. I went down there, me and Beth, to get a house or something, and, and we were going back. I still had some time up in Norfolk I had to do, and we, we had to find a church on a Wednesday night. Now, I don't do this all the time, but I did. That night we did. And we stopped in this fundamental Baptist church, and I can still tell you what that guy was preaching tonight and the passages and everything. That sermon is still running right through my head. You say, what was that? That was the Lord saying, look. He said, look at this idiot, man. He is actually trying to find a church on a Wednesday night. He's going to get off the expressway, and he's going. something told me to get off the expressway and find a church. Now, like I said, I don't do that always, but this day I did. And I said, I got to get off, pull off, and here's a Southern Baptist church all closed down. I'm, I'm assuming it's a Southern Baptist church. It could have been, could have been a fundamentally independent King James Bible leaving Baptist church. I don't know what it was. I think it was a Southern Baptist, if I remember right. I'm sitting there right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. And we go left and around the corner about a mile and a half, and here's this huge, great big old Jack Hollis looking church out there. And we stop in there, and me and Beth go sit up in a balcony somewhere and listen to the guy preach. And I could not believe what the guy said. I mean, I, I, everything he said, verses started coming in my mind that I had read. And I never put them all together, and this guy was just clinging them things together, just sewing them together, just like you would be making a garment. And when he got done, he had that thing all sewed together, and I'm like, well, check that out, man. I said, I never knew that. And that thing was been in my mind for probably 35 years. And you say, what is that? I received it as the word of God. Not that that man was saying anything down there. I didn't care what he was saying. It's, he started matching the book I had in my hand. You know what the key is? I just get this book in somebody's hand and start. Did you give her a Bible the other day? Yeah. She came in. Beth said, I remember you asking her. She goes, you got a Bible? She goes, no, I don't. She didn't have a cell phone either. That was a blessing. Man, I said, you got a cell phone? I said, we can call you and come pick you up. And she goes, I don't have a phone. It's probably because she didn't have no money, but that's okay. I mean, it's probably good. So, so we, we, but we were gentle among you. Paul, Paul cared about those people. He didn't care whether they cared about him. He cared about them. You know, the hardest thing you'll ever do is care about somebody who don't care about you. So to reach out to somebody who just, and I tell you, here you go. I'm only, a lesson I learned in, I'm 67, I'll be 67 this year. Just because you think somebody's thinking what you think you're thinking, doesn't mean they're thinking that. What you need to do is go up to them and look them in the eyeball and say, do you think this? 
they might say, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And then you'll realize that I've been back here mad, upset, and the devil just sits there with a thorn man, and he keeps pushing that thing in, and none of that stuff is even there. And you sit there and scratch your head and go, what was that? And all of a sudden you realize and it's the old man versus the new man. And the battle is right there. And you got to chunk this guy off to the side and say, I don't want you no more. Get, he says, uh, resist the devil and he'll flee. But you got to know he's there. And the only way you're ever going to know that thing is this book. You know what Paul, Paul got into this thing and he said, I was gentle among you. He knew that some of these people would, would understand and would not understand. But boy, he was tickled pink when he realized that, hey, you received it as the truth. It wasn't that Paul said it. You received this thing. Is, is your Bible talk, does your Bible talk to you? I'm telling you what. Do you ever read this thing and just look at it? It's just, it's just black ink on pages is all it is. But it's the way it's arranged and the way God did this thing and the way he laid it out. And you sit there and read that thing and you go down through it and all of a sudden the thing just starts spilling off the pages. And, and, and I'm sitting here just, and then somebody will say something. And that, like that guy on the radio said, you know, the darker it gets, the more stars you see. And I said, I remember out on those ships out in the middle of the ocean, it was just that way. I said, that guy's saying the truth. That's a truth. And I said, Lord, sometimes, and I, all of a sudden I stopped. I said, Lord, sometimes it gets awful dark for me. And I said, sometimes I, I don't even know if you're anywhere near. But boy, I said, I think you are because I'm talking to you. And if, and if you can't do nothing with me, could you please find somebody else you can do something with? I said, if you're done with me and I am no good anymore, then throw me off to the side and get somebody else that you can use. And thank you that it gets darker. <laughs> you ever thought about that stuff? Man, I called Dr. Peacock today and he started crying on the phone. I started crying on the phone. And he started crying on the phone and... And the more he cried, I wanted to cry too, man. I, I, said, oh, I said, Lord, this is crazy. Because you hurt with a brother. You hurt with somebody else that's really hurting. Have you ever been with somebody your whole life? I've been with her for 35 years now. 34. Seems like 35. Seems like forever. 34 years. And he goes, Mike, just think about Beth not being there in a year. And I'm like, what a thing, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe. That's just hard to believe. And you're sitting there thinking about it. They don't know exactly everything going on right now, but it's just one of those things where you're sitting there and you don't know what's going on, but you got to trust God. And he says, that's all we're doing, brothers. We're trusting God. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail. Paul and, and Timotheus and Silvanus had a, and Titus, they had labors in front of these people, and they saw it. They, they never got much out of it, maybe, but the people got everything out of it. You know what the key, you know why you would have a church is so you guys could get fed. Why? So that some little girl named Ashley maybe, maybe just walks in off the street and get it. Well, Pete's back there in the back, man. What a, what a blessing, man. He's sitting back there. I look up and said, whoa, check that out. You never know who's going to come to church on a Wednesday night. You just have the doors open, man. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Whenever you lose the fact that it's a privilege to serve Jesus Christ, you're missing it. You're losing it. You're losing it right there. It isn't a burden. It should never become burdensome. I come in and Elizabeth goes, Dad, the printer won't print. Copy your print in half a page. Y'all seen the half a page thing. I'm like, I just walk in the door, man. I'm already late anyways. And now I said, thank God. I said, is it a long mission letter or a short one? <laughs> I thought, pray the Lord is a long one. You know, you get into that stuff, man. It's great. For you remember, brethren, our labors in travail, and I'll stop right here, for laboring night and day, they never stopped. Brethren, I'm telling you, here's another thing. If you're doing other things and your labors aren't for Jesus Christ, you're wasting your time. I learned, I, I tell you all about reading my Bible, and whether you read your Bible or not, it's your choice. I know what I got to do. But I realized real quick that I had to let some other things go in my life to get that thing done. I had to, and to do anything else I'm doing, other things have to go out. Sure. I have a friend that loves to play golf. I used to like to bowl. There's all kinds of things I like to do. I haven't got time. I talked to my friend, and he goes, Mike, he goes, I love to play golf. But I haven't played golf in years. I just don't have time. He says, if I do everything I'm supposed to do for the Lord wants me to do, I ain't got time to do none of that stuff. You know what? Sometimes we, we value our, our precious time more than precious time with the Lord. And you got to let that thing go, man. You, it's a mindset again. If you're sitting there right now looking at me like, 
he's trying to take what free time I've got and make me serve God with it. Then don't do it. I'm just telling you, I had to, to if I want to, it's like the Holy Spirit saying, you really want to read this thing four times a year? Yeah, well, then you got to get rid of some stuff and make some other stuff hold, uh, uh, do, fit in there where you can get some time to get in your book and read it. That's what Paul did. He says, for you remember, brethren, our labor. People watch you. You want, you want, a te- you want uh, results? Live this book because they watch you. Paul had a, an effect on the Thessalonians. Because Paul led a life. He preached, he lived what he preached. They saw what he preached and what he... Now, Paul got beat and banged up on. He spilled blood for what he thought, what he taught and what he did. He, he was, he, Paul did it. I, I've never been like Paul. I've never had been where Paul's been. I've never had in, thrown in prison and in stocks and bonds in the middle of the night singing Amazing Grace, How Great Thou Art. That wasn't me. I, I've been in jail a couple of times. I never did that. Paul did it. Paul was at a place in his life with a walk with Jesus Christ that he knew that what mattered was men's souls and helping them grow in grace and knowledge. That's what he knew his job was. And he never let that job go till the day he died. And you know what? Some of us, we, we all have a job to do. And sometimes we forget what that job is. And we let other things creep in. And the devil will fill those gaps quickly. He'll fill it with uh, spider solitaire, man. I mean... There's things he can fill it with, and you'll just waste hours. And, and it seems good, and it seems okay, and all these things. But really, when it boils right down to it, it's like, Lord, really, what did that do in eternity? It didn't do a whole lot of anything. You know, in Paul's eyes, his mind was set on eternity. I knew a man about 14 years ago with anybody out of body count. That's one called the third heaven. That's Paul. That's where his mind was. You know where John was? He said, a door opened up, and suddenly, I'm there, man. You know where... You know where Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I think Paul was trying to kill himself, and, he, and the Lord just wouldn't let him do it. You know, you, you got a book called Thessalonians sitting here. It's a great book to read. Paul sits there and says, For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance unto you. You have an entrance into people. You're a Christian now. You're not the same as, as a person in this world. That little girl that walked in the other day, she needed somebody to comfort her heart. Not tell her, you're this, you're this. No, no, no. I said, hey, sis, man. Me and Beth was sitting there trying to encourage her the best. She started crying in there. I showed her one of Dave Spurgeon's tracks, and she knew about the outlaws. And she just started bawling her eyes out when she seen the two pictures on that track. And I said, yeah, there's a man right there. There's a perfect example of a man right there who turned his life over to Jesus Christ and never looked back. Does Dave have issues? Of course he does. So do I, and so do you. But you know what Dave's done? That, that ju- Jewish judge said, you're going to go in the ministry. And he, he didn't necessarily put him in the ministry that way, but he said, you're going to go around and tell your story to a lot of people. And that started the ministry for him, and he's been in it ever since. You know, God does some weird things. Sometimes you've got to burn some bridges behind you let that stuff go. The flesh just gets in there, man. The flesh, I can do this, I can do this. And there's a lot of weak Christians out there who say, yeah, come on over here, be with us, be with us. Brother, they're, they're not what you are because they have never done what you did. I'm not saying they're lost. I'm just saying they never stood the ground you stood. And when you stand that ground, there's no going back. And this world is constantly trying to pull us back and pull us back and pull us back and just compromise here and compromise there. And you can fill the ch- I don't want to fill the church up. Not with somebody who doesn't want to be here who just wants to change our music. I don't want to change the music. I, I like that organ coming in here. You know why? I think a church ought to have an organ. I think it ought to have a piano and an organ player and a piano player. And we got bunches of piano players. And if Amy gets sick again, she's toast, man. We're going to put uh, uh, Brother Tom's daughter in here. We, 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 I, got, I got Adam. I got, I got 14 piano players, man. You say, well, maybe I need to put 14 pianos on the platform. I don't know. Maybe we can get dueling banjos or pan- dueling pianos or something. But I'm telling you what, brother, you know what? I think a church ought to be a church, and, and it's not going to change. I want the old past. I like the old past. I've read about the old past. I can't do what they did 1,800 years ago or 1,000 years ago or two, 300 years ago. We can't do that today, but we can still strive to do some of those things. And keep it as solid as we can down the road so we can be the light that this world needs to see. You know, it was a good light the other day. Rich was down the road. He shined his little light bulb down there. And he goes, hey, there's a place right down there. And a couple minutes later, she comes in the door down here. And I come down there, and there it's a track rack. 
I said, what a blessing, man. And George, me and George is in there talking. I said, George, later, man. I'm out of here. I said, there's, a, there's a, somebody I can talk to right over here. You, you already saved. I already know you're saved. And George comes by, and he goes, come here. i got to tell you something, lady. I'm like, oh, man. He goes, He's, he was in the Navy, if you didn't know. <laughs> I, said, I said, he started it for me, man. It was cool. Father, thank you for your blessings tonight. Lord, I do pray that you just uh, bless the prayer service. And, and Lord, help us to be more like the, the church at Thessalonians that, that, that they were, Lord. Uh, Lord, they, Paul come and talked to them. He said they just believed the word of God, and they just they did it. They lived it, Lord. Uh, they didn't just do it. And Paul said I, he came in before him. Help us to be like Paul, Lord. Uh, we need to minister like he ministered, Lord, and, and let this world think that it's not for filthy lucre's sake or covetousness or anything like that, Lord. It's just strictly we're here to get the gospel across. And, Lord, the devil, we're in a world, Lord, that is just unbelievable. Uh, the, the amount of stuff that you can get your fingers on and in, and uh, it's, it's crazy. It's just all over the place. Uh, but, Lord, uh, the, the Word of God needs to speak to each and every one of us. And, Lord, I just pray that we'd open our hearts up to it. Uh, Lord, there's nothing hindering this book from talking to anyone in this room tonight uh, or talking to all of us together, Lord. Uh, you said you'd guide and direct us. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. Lean on him and understand you always acknowledge him, and he shall direct that path. You, you gave us promises all the way through there, Lord, that you'd take us and and guide us and direct us. And that's, those are individual promises, Lord, that you would do. You said you'd never leave us or forsake us. And, Lord, uh, that means you'll never leave me. I'll, you'll always be with me. I don't ever have to worry about that. Uh, Lord, just help us to, to overcome the devil because, Lord, he's just trying to put this stuff in our minds. And, Lord, if anybody in here tonight has issues, Lord, I just pray that you'd help them overcome those issues. Lord, go to their brother or sister and just talk to them. And if they have somebody else that needs to be talked to, Lord, that you can go talk to them. And, Lord, uh, get it under the blood and just let me just move on. Father, again, thank you for all your blessings, and thank you for a Bible. Uh, thank you for just a, a time to come together and study the Word of God. And we'll praise you, honor in Jesus' name. Amen.